In this clip I'm going to show you, demonstrate a few basics of working with MATLAB. The first thing you should do once you start MATLAB is you should change the current folder to the folder you are planning to work in. So let me just find a folder here. I'm going to work in this one. So this is an empty folder, so you can see here in the current folder window there's nothing in there. Should you have any files in there, there would be stuff in here. So the next thing you want to do is you want to create a script file. So just click on the new symbol, new script symbol, or go to file, new script. And I'm going to save this as um, just first. And you save it as a .m file. It's important that that file does not have any spaces and it starts with a letter, not with a number. So now we have our editor here. You could take this with this little arrow, you can take it out and you have it as your individual file if you want to. I find it usually easier, at least in most cases, to put it back into your sort of MATLAB window. Now let me first do, the first thing you have to realize is in MATLAB everything happens in matrices. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to create quickly a matrix. I'll call it MATLAB's case sensitive. So sometimes could call matrix matrices as capital letters, but you don't have to. For instance, if I say A equals one five comma two. So what this will do is it will create a matrix with five rows and two columns and all elements will be ones. So and I'll close with a semicolon. And then what I'm going to do is I create the matrix B. And here I want to take the values of A and I add 2 to that matrix. So let's see what happens. At this stage, I've just written two commands. And MATLAB hasn't executed them yet. If I press that little green arrow, it will execute the command. So let's do that. So what we can see here in the workspace, you can now actually see the two matrices it has created. You double click on the A and a little sort of variable editor will open and indeed A is a 5 by 2 matrix, all elements being equal to 2 and the matrix B remember how we defined it, B was A plus 2, so it MATLAB indeed added 2 to actually every element in A. Okay, So now you can do different things. We can, uh, instead of ones, we could actually, for instance, define A as rand 5,2. That will now create a random matrix where the rand command will give you random numbers between 0 and 1 on a uniform distribution and then B will again take these values of A and add 2 to each element. So let's uh, execute that again. F5 will do the same. F5 will execute all, command, all commands. So let's look at A first. These are now all random numbers. And B, we still have B here. If we look at them next to each other, you will see that B is just 2 added to each element here. So we've done all of these commands in the, uh, in the editor, and you could add many, many more commands. Uh, what's quite important is you can add comments. So use a percentage sign, and everything in every line that comes after that percentage line will be ignored by MATLAB. This is just for your own benefit. It's actually quite important to use comments. You can now also do little, you could do things on uh, in your command window. So one command at a time you can type into the command window. So we could, for instance, create a new matrix C and say, well, that should be B minus 2. In fact, once we do that, we should just get the same as A, so C should be the same as A. So press enter and it will execute this command. Let's look at C. So if we now look at C, that is here, and that's indeed exactly the same as A. Okay, just by the way how we defined 
how we define this. Also you can see there's a little window command history, at least in my case. If it doesn't show for you, you can go to desktop and uh, tick command history. Because it's ticked here, it shows. If it's not tick, tick it. And then it will show. That's sometimes quite useful. You can create the same command again by, for instance, just dragging this over here. Or that's executed, it will just give us exactly the same result again, so C will still be the same as A. You can also use the up arrow and it will go through the last few commands which you had. We only had sort of two. We executed the script first or we had this command. Also, you see I always ended the line with a semicolon. If you take the semicolon of A and execute it, I'll press enter in a second. It will do exactly the same, the only difference is that now it will also print the result of that into the command window. So you can see here C equals this result. It will still of course save the result in the workspace as well. Um, it just gives you that additional output. By default you should possibly when you write a script put semicolons at the end of the line if you want to display something. So. We can now, for instance, we could have tested this C command. Let's say we like that C command. We can drag it in here. If you actually want to display what you are doing, you can use a command. It's, I find it quite advantageous to use this command, disp C, and it will then display. Let's say we want, first want to display A, and then we also want to display C, just to see that we indeed get the correct commands. We press F5, and when we do this command, so it executed our script, which is called first, and the two things it displayed on the screen is first A and then C, and they are indeed the same as they should be. Now, since we're dealing with matrices, sometimes it's very useful. What you want to do is you want to to access particular elements of your matrices. So let's say um, first another thing that is quite useful. If you type CLC in the command window or have it in your script, what will happen is it will clear the command window. Sometimes it just gets too messy. And if you cl type clear all, it will actually clear all the variables out of the workspace. So and sometimes it is quite useful to actually include these two commands, clear all and clc, at the beginning of the script. So the first thing MATLAB will do as you execute your script is clear all the variables and clear the command window. So let's say when we display things we also want to say what we are displaying. So let's say in single um, inverted commas everything that comes in single inverted commas is just text. So let's just run it like this. Now we just see A and C. That was the little, these are these lines. This line here prints that A. This line actually prints the matrix A. This line prints this line prints the C, the letter C, and then this one prints the actual matrix C. So let's say we also want to display the first row of A. How do we do that? So I'll just put a space here. So let's say First, what we actually want to do is we create a new variable. Let's call it A1. You could give it whatever name. And we want this to be equal to the first row of matrix A. So we want it to be not equal to A. If we did that, we would just create a new variable that is equal to A. But we want it to be a part of A. Now, what part? Now, there are two things here, a row reference and a column reference. So in the row reference, we say which rows. We said we want the first row, so row one. And columns, well, basically we want all columns, the first and the second column. If you want all, what you do is the, um, a colon. 
So if we do this, display A1. So let's do this, and you can see indeed what uh, has been displayed here is the first row of A. Okay. So let's say we want to do a bit more different stuff. Let's say we don't want to display C anymore. You can either delete it, or if you think it may come in handy later, you can comment it out. So you highlight it. So you could either just put percentage signs in front. Now a quicker way is to actually highlight the two columns and then press Control R, and that will put a percentage sign in front of every command. If you highlight light rows and press control T it will make the percentage signs disappear but let's leave them there. So let's say we also want to display the first column of A uh, what we do let's call it C1 and that is equal A. Now again remember we have a row and a column reference so which column, the first, so here one, which row, well all rows, so that means we use a column here. And then let's say view display C1. So let's execute that. And now we can see the first row here and here the first column of A, which is of course identical to the first column here. So what if we want to Okay, so display, let's say we want rows 2 to 4 of A. Okay, so let's say we want that. So again, create a new variable, let's just call it uh, R24 for rows 2 to 4. It should be elements of A. So again, row and column reference. So rows two and four, that means we want all columns of the relevant row. So there goes a colon. Now, if it was only row two, we would say this. If it was only row four, we would say this. As we want rows two to four, we do this, two colon four. And then we display R24 and we execute and what we get is uh, row uh, okay yeah row two to four it displayed it twice it displayed twice exactly the same thing this and this because what I said earlier in line 23 here I didn't put a semicolon so it actually printed this result already and then here was another command which ask it to exactly display this command. So really what I wanted was this. And here we have it only once. So this is how you address particular elements of a matrix. So if you go through the uh, basics and matrices sections of the Eclair website you can see lots of things you can do with matrices. I'll just do one more thing. Let's say we want to show uh, the average of columns of A. Okay. I just type all of this because I want to see on the command window what I'm actually printing. There's no need to, to actually print these uh, this text bit. So let's call it average of A of the columns and then what I do is mean uh, the mean of A. So if I plot the mean of A, let's now display average A. Let's run this code. So what you can see here is that, actually, let me just do it again. Let me comment all of this out. So we just see A and then the mean. So here's A and here's the mean. So this number is just the average value of the first column. This number is the average value of the second column. Now, if you look at the Eclair website, you see that there's what this basically mean is. I want to say one more thing. This mean, 
This is basically some sort of function like a little bit of computer program which when you call that name mean MATLAB knows ah go away to this computer little program and calculate the mean of A. Now if A is a matrix then by default it will calculate the mean of each column. Could have done exactly the same by saying mean a comma one. That's just just to show that there's no difference. We'll do exactly that, and now it will calculate the still the average of this. I executed it again. You see, we got new numbers. Now why is that? Because a is always defined as a random number, and whenever we run it. Well, it draws random numbers and it's in the nature of the random number that you always want them to do to be different so every time I run so I'll press repeatedly F5 every time you run it you will get different numbers and therefore different different means now we have a matrix here it could be that perhaps you wanted the average in each row so you wanted five values if you want MATLAB to calculate averages of rows what you do is you say mean A of which you want to calculate averages and then comma 2 now if we calculate this you can now see the result has changed somewhat because now it gives you five values of averages and now this value 0.2019 is the average of these two values 0.2348 and 0.169 okay that's all for starters in the basics and matrices section there are lots more commands which you should just try and just try them by writing in a script the important thing is the last thing I say is if you have it in a script if you now close MATLAB and you open MATLAB again you will just open that script and you have all your commands available if you type commands here in the command window and you open it, they have disappeared. Well, perhaps you can see they may still appear here in your history, but it's just not as useful as having them in one script file. So that's it for starters. Enjoy your MATLAB journey.